Hey YouTube, Apple iDev here with our fourth video in the Programming 101 series. Um, in our last video, we went over these primitive data types up here. Um, so, in between making th that last video and this video, uh, I put in some more code here. Uh, it's actually a lot of code, but uh, don't worry about that for now. Um, basically, what we're going to be doing today is it's just going to be more on primitive data. Um, we're going to kind of go over some limitations of this data, um, so different things that you need to know when using different types of data. Um, so with that, here we go. Um, the first thing that I uh, didn't go over before that we need to go over now um, is something with floating point constants. A floating point number, like I said, is a number that's essentially just a decimal number. There's a decimal point in there. Um, but the thing about decimal numbers is that for each different type, double, float, or long double, uh, the computer stores it differently. Um, the same thing isn't true with integers. With integers, um, whether it's a long, short, or an int, uh, the compiler store or the uh, the computer stores it the same way. It's just the values that it can hold. But because they're floating point numbers, the computer has to store them different. Has to store the variables differently based on what type of constant is put into it. So, um, because of that, there's something that uh, we need to do. Um, in order to let the uh, compiler know, and in order to let the computer know uh, what type of um, what type of data this is. So, for example, um, we need to differentiate a float, a double, and a long double. Uh, and the catch here is that um, if you don't put these characters in that I'm going to show you in a minute, the compiler is going to store all of your data or any constant that you put into a floating point number, they will all be stored as doubles if you don't do this. Um, and I'll show you why, probably in the next video, why that's bad. Um, but for now, just make sure that you uh, do what I'm telling you. Um, that sounds a little obnoxious, but trust me, it'll end up better. So what, the first thing that you need to know is when you have a float type. Um, ours is right now called my float. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a capital F at the end. Um, it, you, you can see if I run it now, uh, the compiler doesn't have a problem with it. That just tells the compiler that to store it as a float rather than as a double constant. Um, and uh, I'm sure you guessed it, if you put in a capital L after long double, uh, it compiles just fine, and that tells the compiler to store the, the long that constant 3.14 as a long double. Um, there isn't one for double, because double is the default, double is the uh, shortest size, so when in doubt, the computer's going to use the shortest size. Um, um, so, so that's really it um, for that. The next thing that we're going to talk about is scope. Um, and we're not talking about, like, math, mouthwash brands. Um, in this term, or in this area, scope means where a variable can be used and what it can be used for. Um, and for this, we're going to be talking about bits and bytes and memory. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'll probably go over binary in a later video, but what you need to know, essentially, is that every byte uh, has 8 bits in it. Um, so when you hear 32-bit computing, that is a 4-byte computer. Or if you hear a 64-bit computer, that's 8 bytes. Um, and then there are 1,024 bytes to a kilobyte, 1,024 kilobytes to a megabyte, 1,024 megabytes to a gigabyte, and so on. It just keeps going. Um, so a bit is actually the smallest form of data that a computer can hold, um, and a byte is what we're going to mostly be dealing with. Uh, kilobytes is what you normally see. Uh, but here, for our purposes, um, right now, we're going to be talking about bits and bytes. Um, and remember what I talked about before. I talked about uh, the different sizes of these data types. And uh, that's actually what all of this code is for, it's to uh, show you a little something, and now I'm going to drag this up, and that is this. Um, I don't know that I can make this any bigger. I can't. Uh, so I'll just zoom in when I edit the video later. Um, anyway, uh, you can see each of these data types. Um, this number, the first number is the number of bytes, and the second number is the values, the number of values that that type of data can hold. Um, that that data can hold, essentially the range of values that it can hold. Um, so, for example, a sh and the way you calculate this, sorry, I need to back up a second, is 2 to the num like exponent raised to the number of bits that you're dealing with. So for like 1 bit, 
um, or for one byte, which is eight bits, you do two to the eighth, and that's where you get this 256 down here. For a two byte, uh, you do two to the sixteenth, and that's where you get this 65,536, and it just keeps going. So you can imagine when you get a really large number, that's something like 16 bytes long, um, you get something really obnoxiously large, like 3.4 to the 38th, um, or 3.4 times 10 to the 38th. It's just a really big number. Um, so, having said that, um, yeah, so uh, that these are ranges of values that these uh, data types can hold. But there's a catch. Um, what we're next going to talk about is something called a signed versus an unsigned variable. Um, this isn't a term that you've heard before, but essentially what that means is normally with numbers, like if I were to put in, in a 5 here, that's, um, I could also put in a negative 5. And what we refer to that is called a signed integer. It means that you can have positive or negative. It's signed. There is a sign in front of it. Um, what I can also do is I can also make this an unsigned int. And what that does, you can see the compiler recognizes it as a keyword, but now if I try and put a negative 5 in there, um, it converts it to a positive 5. Um, all of these values are automatically converted to positive, and it can only hold positive values. Um, actually, here I need to change something quick. Uh, to um, Actually, I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Anyway, I'll figure it out. But the main idea here is that, um, like, if I, right after that, if I do a... Uh, print f um, say percent d my int all right and if we run that um, that should not be what is happening um, I'm not sure why I'll try and figure that out and put that in the next video if I uh, find a solution. Um, but basically, an unsigned int just changes the values that it can hold. Um, so, um, anyway, what we're going to look at now is um, basically what the unsigned int does is it takes. Um, oh shoot, am I going to have to restart this? I am. All right. So let's force quit Xcode here for a sec. We want this stuff back up. So basically, what the unsigned does is it means that instead of holding, val um, or I guess with this length, with this data that it can hold, right now, um, this short integer can hold values ranging from negative 32,768 to a positive 32,767. If I had an unsigned short, what that would do is it would mean rather than holding negative 32,768 to positive 32,767, it can now only hold values 0 through 65,536. Um, same thing like with an integer. Instead of holding values, um, you know, negative 2,147,000, etc., um, to positive 2,147,000, it would hold 0 to 4,294,000. Um, so, or, uh, for, sorry, four billion, two billion and four billion. Um, but essentially, um, don't worry about that. Just know that there's a difference between signed and unsigned. Um, and basically, it's whether it can hold a negative number or not. Um, so, the next thing that we're going to look at is, um, I guess, along with uh, all of this scope, you're going to wonder how I um, got these numbers to show up because I didn't just type them in. If I show you the source code for that area, I didn't just type in size of double two parentheses 65536. Um, or short, sorry. Um, and that's because every computer stores data differently. Your computer, if you typed in all of this code, your computer might come up with 1242481. Um, you don't really know. So it's important when you're uh, developing for a different computer that you've never really used before, you want to run a program like this. You want to figure out how the computer stores data so you know what numbers you can hold in those data types. 
Um, and for this, C actually has a special keyword, and they call it the size of operator. Um, and the thing about the size of operator is, first of all, in front of it, you always need to have a parentheses and then some sort of um, data type. Generally, you're going to want an int, and that's called a typecast. Don't worry about that. Just assume it's kind of magic for now. Um, but just know that size of doesn't actually return an integer. It returns a weird data type that isn't understood by printf, so we need to convert it to an integer. And then after size of, what we're calling is we're going to send that the parameter. We'll talk about parameters and returns later. But we're going to send it the parameter short. So that tells you that or that tells it that it's going to be analyzing the short data type. And it's going to tell you how many bytes it's going to take, or how many bytes the computer reserves for a short variable. Um, and then what here down here what I did is I said power, uh, or the power function, which I had to do a pound include on math.h. Um, I said power, uh, that means it's going to be, the base is going to be 2, and it's going to be raised to the 8 times the uh, size of that data type. Um, because there are 8 bits in a byte, uh, so I want to know the number of bytes, times 8 will give me the number of bits, and 2 to that number is going to give me the values that that number can hold. Um, so, that's how I did that. Um, but just make sure that you always run this, nothing should be assumed, you shouldn't assume what kind of data your computer can hold, um, or how your computer will store that data. So that's just something you need to be careful with. Um, so next, we're in the next video, I'll be talking a little bit more about um, how and when to use different data types, and um, hopefully I'll talk about binary and some other things that you don't understand yet. Um, but you will soon, very hopefully. So uh, stay tuned for another video. Later.